few Goldie Lock Bears podcast with Vincent Cloud, John Nemitz, Matt Hagan, Scotty Allwood, Dave Lauer, James Clark, and our seventh mystery guest. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we're here to talk about our loves, hates, and indifferences. Uh, uh, b- before we do that, though, does anyone have a deja few? I do. I have a deja few, um, which really messed with my mind as I was watching the episode Free Will. Didn't didn't care for that conversation much because then I started to th- just rethink everything about how my mind works and what is going on. Um, that's all I really have to say about it. I really enjoyed the conversation about it though, but it did mentally like make me just overthink. Good, good, good. It's designed (laughs) to make you (laughs) over. You know, when you start down this rabbit hole of how our brains work and why are there different personalities? Why are people the way they are? It's, it's, um, I don't know. It screws with me. Like I could spend hours debating that sort of stuff yeah and i usually go here for the laughs but yeah sometimes we'll talk about something where i'm like oh this isn't fun this is (laughs) (laughs) it was still it was interesting it was a good episode still it doesn't always have to be funny i never promised fun (laughs) (laughs) or or a rose garden (laughs) um but uh any other Daisha fuse? Let's. Uh... Well, Aaron Rodgers officially got traded. Let's see. This is uh, today's Tuesday, so he got officially traded yesterday after a bunch of drama. So, as a Packer fan, I'm pretty happy with it. Um, draft picks came back, and Rodgers is gone, and I'm excited. I have excitement for the Jordan Love era. We'll see what happens. Any other Packer fans out there? Yep. I mean, I was going to say, someone some he's wearing a hat. <laughs> oh, I didn't even see oh, the hat. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Totally forgot about that. But well, yeah, it's time, it's, it's time for a new era in Green Bay. So, yeah, I, I'm excited too. Um, I I think the draft compensation we got was really good. The fact that the the first rounder next year, he, he just Rogers just has to play 65 percent of the snaps, like. They don't have to qualify for the playoffs. They don't have to like make it to the AFC championship game. They don't have to do any of that. He just has to play like eleven games and that's it. I like it. So we're all kind of hoping Rogers plays sixty five percent of the season and the Jets go four and thirteen and I think they can handle uh, that. Top five. Yeah. <laughs> and then Rogers retires promptly after the season and then signs with the Vikings. That's three months say, yes, later. The Vikings, <laughs> the Vikings <laughs> alert. Oh man. And then he uh sends a photo of his dick to yeah. a reporter. <laughs> <laughs> Commits welfare fraud in Mississippi. <laughs> oh man. Uh well I say we start the show off and uh I can't think of a better topic than Dave's. Take it uh, away, Dave. Go ahead. <laughs> My topic is I hate the view. Or not the, the <laughs> Let's do the view. The view as well. <laughs> he hates women. <laughs> oh, it's better than that. I hate the voice. Um, the reason I hate the voice is multiple reasons. I've watched m- probably 10 seasons of this show. It's They probably had 30 seasons of this show, but I've watched probably 10 of them. Um, so there's multiple reasons to dislike this show. Um, just the producers kind of always meddling with things, um, kind of setting things up and putting matchups where one person um, has to sing a song that is not very good and doesn't like, um, you know, showcase their talents in a way. Um, So there's lots of little things. But here's my big problem with this season of The Voice is there is a contestant on there. And so first I'm going to make kind of an analogy for another instance of this that we probably have seen and will recognize is we've all seen like footage of like a middle school football game where there's the mentally handicapped kid and they bring him onto the field and they give him the football and the defense all kind of stands back and they just let him run to the end zone to score a touchdown so he can have this wonderful moment 
and the whole team can celebrate and we can act like he did something great. And that's fine. I like that. You know, it's good good for that kid. You know, I was really, I was like, and you don't like that? I'm, <laughs> I'm fine with that to a degree, but that's kind of happening on this season of The Voice. There is a deaf girl. And this deaf girl, if you've ever heard a deaf person speak, they don't sound very good and they don't sound like a normal sounding person sounds when they talk, let alone sing. So this deaf girl is on this season and she came out for her audition and I was like, you know, she's pretty good for a deaf girl. But she's not at the same level as the rest of the contestants. Like, it's there's just no comparison. But they, like, let her onto the show. And I'm like, okay, you know, they're doing a charity case. You know, they're letting the, the slow kid score a touchdown. That's fine. But then she wins the next matchup. And I'm like, okay, we're taking this a little too far. And then she goes out again, and she's won a third matchup now. And it's, to me, it sounds like they're auto-tuning her. She doesn't sound that good, even with the auto-tuning. Uh, I don't know. It's... It just seems like a big charity case on TV, and they're just making such a big deal about it, and it's it's ruining the season, and it's taking me out of it because I want a pure competition of who has the best voice, not just someone advancing to the next round because we want to be nice to them because they have a handicap. So, I, so does 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 Brooke know that you hate handicapped people, Dave? <laughs> uh, yes, I've I've voiced this opinion. About my dislike for the voice in front of her, and she agrees. And did you voice it in a deaf person's voice? <laughs> no, I didn't. <laughs> that would be offensive. <laughs> that is a line I will not cross. <laughs> you just but use I will your hate hands. <laughs> there are so many things that I dislike about the voice that I would love to discuss. But what you're talking about, I 100% am on your side. I have not been watching this season, but. Uh, it just seems unfair to the people who actually have good voices if she's getting to advance for no reason. And or how long are they going to continue to do this? Are she going to win the it's fucking a, it's a season? Place to implement affirmative action. <laughs> Welcome to the real world, fellas. Right? <laughs> That's the wrong reality show. <laughs> <laughs> um. So, but how are the contestants that lose? Are they like smiling and like, oh my god, you did such a good job, and they're like trying not to? <laughs> okay. So, this is part of the bad production part. Is they implemented a new rule this year where it's called a playoff pass, and basically what it means is, even as you have a battle between two singers. Um, one girl will win, and then, like, the person she's going against, like, this guy, even though he lost the battle and the coach picked the girl, the playoff pass, all coaches have one playoff pass, so there's four of them. They can hand it out to the loser and be like, you're automatically to the playoff. Mm -hmm. But, like, the it doesn't make any sense to because go you can't call to... someone... Yeah, you can't say one person lost a battle and then be like, oh, but you're good enough to go all the way to the playoff. It, so, like, none of it makes really any sense, as, like, as a viewer. Like, if you're just watching it and you're like, oh, I have these, you know, three favorite singers. I'd like one of them to win. Because I'm constantly watching these battles and watching the better singer lose. But then sometimes the better singer loses, but then they get a playoff pass. And it, it, none of it makes any sense. Is this show, like, I thought you were just going to rip on the show, like, you know, oh, my fiance makes me watch it, and I begrudgingly sit there. Uh, I mean, that, that was like you me, actually enjoy the show. That was, that was me in the past, where I didn't really like it. Well, at first, I really loved it. But then I started to dislike it, and now they're doing so much stupid stuff that I hate it. Like, it's, I've come full circle on it. I always thought that like the thing that kind of made me enjoy it less because I did watch it sometimes with my my dad he likes it a lot but there was always some sob story like they would they would, like they were picking people with good voices but they had they had to have a sob story to go along with it and there would be a 5 minute clip and then it was kind of like karaoke to where they were just singing these other people's songs and I was just like I don't know like this show is not for me kind of thing I would love to see a show that's not this <laughs> that makes no sense. 
<laughs> right. That I mean, that's kind sense. of what I'm thinking is like, I, I've, I've never been a fan of any of these types of shows. Um, and like, I don't think they're meritocracies. <laughs> like they're, they're out to get ratings and to get eyeballs and um, this is how they're doing it. Like you guys do know Netflix and Hulu and all this other stuff exists, right? You don't you don't have to watch the show. <laughs> <laughs> I do if my fiance puts it on the TV. <laughs> you can go in the other room. <laughs> That's so, Matt's solution. Uh, <laughs> Less time with your wife. So, uh, to the football fans, have you guys ever watched the uh, NFL draft? Yes. Okay, so that's coming up this week. Yeah. Uh, I, I, like in years past, ESPN, they will show a football player and they'll show their height, their weight, their 40 time, how much they can bench press. And then they immediately cut to the ESPN docuseries on their past and their upbringing and how their parents either have cancer or they died or they grew up homeless or like some type of adversity they had to overcome in their life. And like, that's fine if you show that about one or two of the draft prospects, but they would literally do that to every single player, every pick. They would go in the order of the pick is announced, their height, their weight, where they went to college, and then their sob story. And it was just every player. And it was just like, I'm so depressed watching the draft because everybody is like, their brother died of like drug overdose and their parents have, stage four cancer and it's like i just think about, about i just think about i think about the girl named gina who just came like has a normal life like nothing bad happened and she has a wonderful singing voice and then she's singing in front of them and their producers are like so what's your background oh you went to high school 4.0 that's cool any uh th- no <laughs> and you're not getting big <laughs> <laughs> i mean everyone has a wonderful singing voice right I mean, yeah, yeah. tell us, show us yours. Let's true. go. I mean, like, <laughs> there's millions of people with wonderful singing voices. Like, they can't all be on the show. Mm. Uh, okay, so I was gonna say they're they were taking away the part of of uh, you know reacting to someone's looks, right? Because that's the one problem I always had with um, uh, there was these clips of American Idol. And people would show up and the judge is like, oh, look at him. He's so pathetic looking <laughs> until he starts singing, right? So it's like, good. Why are we judging people on their looks anyways? It's called a voice. But it sounds like you like this show, Dave. And uh, I'm almost willing to check it out. Although it sounds like you're just hate watching it nowadays. Like uh, we watch The Challenge. <laughs> I, yeah, I would not recommend the show at all because – yeah, you want to hear someone's voice, but you don't even get to hear their voice, really, because the background music and the drums and guitar playing behind them are so loud that you can't hear them sing the song half the time. The song is three minutes long, but they cut it down to about 55 seconds. Um, You don't even get to watch them sing it. They're usually just half the time they're showing, you know, Kelly Clarkson and Blake Shelton and John Legend and Gwen Stefani. They're just doing all the reaction shots. Exactly. Like, and like, I, and they're going like, oh, wow. And it's like, quit talking during someone's performance. Like, they're trying to sing a song here. I don't know. It's everything is like so ADD. They just have to like cut the camera every three seconds. And it's, it triggers me. <laughs> until about uh, five, until about five minutes ago, I thought we were talking about the masked singer. So <laughs> I'm just going to throw that out there. That is the evolution of the voice. <laughs> okay. All right. But the yeah, Masked but... Singer, that's how like famous, right? Did you call famous yes. people famous? famous? I've never heard that either. I like it. <laughs> I thought you were trying to say furries. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it a... he was way off. <laughs> In a way, they are furries, right? They're all like, oh, the, yeah. the, the dancing yeah, panda. Him, right? Yeah. 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 <laughs> so which one is Ken Jong as a host? Is that's that the mass singer. That's the mass singer. Yeah. Okay. That's the only. <laughs> okay, I've seen an episode of that show. I have not seen the voice. Don't bother. Sucks this season, apparently. <laughs> but what about the previous seasons? I should go back and revisit those, right? Yeah, they're Actually... evergreen. <laughs> evergreen. John's uh... bringing out all the all the lingo tonight. <laughs> 
Uh, I say we uh, go to someone else's topic. Let's change it up. Let's hear somebody else's voice. Oh. Ooh. And I nominate um, Scott. Um, oh, yeah. I actually was scrolling through the notes. This person wanted to talk about this, and I'm like, what was mine? Um, <laughs> I, I, <agree>. <laughs> I hate slap fighting. It is a new craze going around right now where uh, it's uh, there's two people on a stage. And there's a guy, and he's like, all right. You slap him, see how it goes, and then he's gonna slap you and see how it goes. And sometimes it's just, and they just they slap him, and then so that's the whole concept is there's it's just they're slapping each other, and sometimes they get a good slap and like knock them down to the ground. And I don't I don't like it. It's so <laughs> imitatable. Yeah. It's so imitatable, isn't it? Now, do they have to explain the rules? You slap that guy and that guy slap. Do they have to explain that every time? <laughs> I sure hope so. Well, there are there are some good rules. Oh, good. But there are things where, like, you can't step into the slap. You have to uh, remain um, standing in your spot. And then you can't slap the ear because, like, you know, when you get punched in the ear, you the fucks you up anyways. Uh, so they have to slap at a certain part of the face, but there's plenty of people who do step in and, and then they could get a point taken away, but the damage oh, is you already mean the done. slapper. Yeah. Yeah. Not the slappy. Okay. So the slapper is supposed to like feet planted. Right. And, and then okay. you can't, yeah, if you're, you're if you're the slappy, you can't flinch. <laughs> I mean, you can't, you can't move to like, kind of like go with the slap. Uh, you could kind of, you're allowed subtle uh, facial movements before you're actually hit in the face. And then you, I don't know, it's so bizarre. I went into this not liking it because Tana White, uh, that's his new thing. Yes, we've uh, talked about this. Yeah. Power slap, right. yeah. I was trying to figure out where we've talked about this before. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Yeah, exactly. So he was, you know, he was recorded slapping his fucking wife on New Year's, yeah. two weeks, two weeks He's committed the... to the brand. Yeah, yeah. was that was that a pro... was that a promotion? <laughs> was that a promotionary PC? I, 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 I guess it was because you know TBS. They were like, "Oh shit, do we do we air this?" All they did was bump it back a week, something like that, and they still they still uh, went on with the show. I don't so know. You're it's... saying his punishment was a slap on the wrist. <laughs> oh, oh, nice. <laughs> that, as the kids say, slaps. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, how do you win? Good question. Oh, well, it's all those little points. Like, if you get knocked, if you can knock the other person down, um, yeah, it's so fucked up because you can still use, like, the I don't know anatomy, guys, but this part right here, it's like the ball of your bone at the end of your arm. Like, a good whack on the chin will knock you fucking out. I hate the fact that you can't protect yourself because, you know, you could say it's barbaric and so is the UFC, but one of the rules is the ref is like, protect yourself at all times. So this is just dumb to me. I, it's just like, lose brain cells in front of everyone, you know? It's fucked up. And then we do as viewers, I feel. Yeah. Have you guys all seen clips of this at least? Because that's what I mainly saw was just, just like clips of it. Yeah, I, I looked it up in prep for today and I hated it. <laughs> <laughs> Good. I, just, I think I'm like Vince. I don't see the point of this. There's so many other things you could have your eyeballs on. Why would anybody watch this? Like if I want to see a fight, I'm going to watch athletes fight. These people. Now, James, James, if you love this, let us know. It's okay to love this. Oh no, I'm I'm with everyone else. It's it's barbaric. There's no defense. What's the point? <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I agree. It's it's really stupid. Um like just if you want to watch boxing, then watch boxing. That's if you want to watch UFC, watch UFC. But like the slap fighting, um I I don't know. It's it's like a stupid form of like the arm wrestling competitions. <laughs> and like I think the arm wrestling competitions are stupid. And 
people aren't even getting knocked unconscious from it. Um, yeah, I don't know. It's, I've seen the clips and that's all I need to see. I don't, I'm never going to actually watch it because it just, it's so unappealing and stupid. And it's like the lowest bottom feeding level of entertainment. I would imagine there is. Now all you got to do is wait. I think it's right until... up there. With, I guess. Go ahead. I think it's right up there with bum fighting. Do you remember bum fights where you just find some homeless guys? Oh, you wanted to talk. That's my next week's love. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> all right. Has Both anybody actually prepare your arguments? <laughs> <laughs> has anybody actually been concussed from this? Like, I, do people get actually get knocked down and 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 stuff like that? Yes. Yeah. Uh, yeah there was also a, knocked out. Yeah, and then that viral video or photo of that guy's face just puffed out up to here. That was messed up. Yeah, you could get really fucked up. You could get seriously injured doing this stupid shit. But I wanted to throw this out there. Okay, so Dave, you're like, fuck it. I'm a good slapper and I could take a hit. And then they give you a deaf person to slap. <laughs> you are screwed. <laughs> <laughs> They're going to give all the points to him. <laughs> That's I'm going to get him right in the ear. Yeah, I'm going to get him right in the ear. ear. <laughs> Who gets the existing condition? Their their insurance ain't gonna cover it. <laughs> uh, How do they decide who goes first in a fight? Oh, in coin the toss? slap, they, yeah, yeah, coin toss. Yep. Yeah, yeah, paper, a, rock, scissors. That's a very important coin toss. That'd be so fucked up, though. You're like, he, hey, you go first. <laughs> <laughs> you know, if you want athletes involved, maybe you do like a triathlon first, and whoever wins that gets to go first oh. in the slap fight. A triathlon? Yeah. <laughs> They're so <laughs> tired by then. They're like, Ugh. <laughs> Vince, you remember when you and I were slapping each other for the the 24-hour New Year's thing, whatever that was? Yeah, there was a there was a project. It was called 24 hours um, because it was leading up to New Year's. So we had like a hundred things to accomplish within 24 hours and we were filming. And uh, one of it was like slap each other for like three minutes or something like that. So it was just John and I in the back of the cars. <laughs> <laughs> this sounds amazing. I want to see this. No, you don't. <laughs> oh, okay, never mind. How many of those hundred things did, did you actually do? I, I barely remember doing this. We... I don't know. We got pretty close. I don't think we did them all because one of them was like lose five pounds and shit like that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And we always started at the strike of midnight. It, so we're already tired with like five hours into it. <laughs> oh, damn. Uh, let's uh, move on to someone else. Uh, let's let one of the grizzled veterans go. Go ahead, Matt. That's you, Vince. Grizzled veteran. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. So I hate. We can't do three hates in a row. Come on. Oh, okay. Come yeah. on. I'll Let's jump in. lighten it up. Let's okay. lighten it up to an indifference, okay? I am indifferent to lawns. Now, we're coming up on lawn season right now. And I like my lawn. I, I, I like taking care of my lawn to a certain extent. But at the same time... You're really, it's all just a matter of like um, maintaining to the level of your neighbor, right? So, so if your neighbor has an immaculate lawn, it kind of kicks you in the ass and says, okay, I need to get at least somewhat in that area, right? And it's, I, I think it's all kind of for resale value too. Like, like I, I don't want my lawn to go to shit because then if I want to go and sell this house in a few years, I'm going to have this shit lawn and it's not going to look nice. So there's that kind of aspect of it too. Um, but I mean, I'm one of those guys that's out there with the, with the chemicals spraying dandelions. Luckily I don't have a lot of dandelions. So I kind of, I kind of get them while I, while they're coming up and, uh, and it seems to keep things in check and I've got creeping Charlie coming into the lawn. So I found I'm on my third, my third different chemical for that. And yes, it is, it is working, but, but at the same time, I, this doesn't matter and it's a gigantic waste of time 
how big is your yard? Is it like a gigantic backyard, front yard? What you, what you working with here? What what am I trying to picture here? What you working with? <laughs> Show me what you're working with. <laughs> I I'm I'm on like uh, how many hectares? <laughs> I'm on like a half acre, but then there's like a a, a city um, easement area behind that, which I kind of maintain as well. So. Uh, but then there's also gardens. So all in all, I'd say it's like a half acre that I'm kind of maintaining as far as lawn goes. But what, um, what's creeping Charlie? Are you dealing with the Viet Cong? Or <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to ask that, but then yeah, I thought too much it, time went by. <laughs> it is an it is an awesome name for a for a weed. Um, it's 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 like this vine, and it's really hard to kill. But it's this vine that literally just creeps and kind of just destroys your lawn and it'll take yeah we we pulled section. some of that up in our backyard and it just came up like a carpet yeah you can you have to spray that stuff planted grass seed where it used to be basically do you hate lawns john or are you, um, do you love, i am not a fan of weed? lawns but we have like turned most of our backyard into like vegetable garden and um like flowers and stuff and even in the our front like there's like, I don't know, 40 square feet of lawn in front that I have to deal with because we've converted it all to other stuff. Uh, could never, you, I... oh, sorry, uh, but could you just let it grow out, Matt? Because, or do you have to deal with the uh, homeowners association or whatever? No, there's no homeowners association. So I, you know, I kind of feel for people that do have to deal with that because I, from what I've seen online, a majority of people that have to deal with an HOA hate an HOA. Um, and then you're paying all those fees on top of that. But no, I, again, it is just maintaining to the level of the, of the, of the neighborhood. You don't want to be the sore thumb in the neighborhood basically is what it comes down to. Yeah. I've, I've already had, had a serious conversation with my neighbor about how soon he can start mowing his lawn because otherwise it just looks ridiculous when he mows it immediately. And then I just look dumb. I have, you know, six inches of grass. Oops. Did you so go actually, over there with the intention of talking to him about this specifically? Like, hey, I see you're outside. You better not start mowing yet. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 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 Exactly. But we get along really good. So it's not an animosity thing. It's just, Travis, come on. We've talked about this, buddy. <laughs> so my city actually sent out a newsletter. Um, well, they do it all the time. But in this last one, they have this thing called No Mow May, where they basically say, leave your yard alone until June because it's like bad for the insects and stuff that grows in there if you um, mess with it too early in the year. So but that's there, a suggestion or is that a... It's a suggestion. Like you're not on your lawn, but um, it, it does make you, you like... Yeah, <laughs> it does make you like feel not bad about like just letting it go for a while which is nice well i uh, i don't have to deal with any of that just a shitty apartment <laughs> yeah i was gonna say i've been lucky enough to always have landlords who would like pay people to mow the lawn and right now i'm in an apartment so i don't have to worry about it again so at, so at my house i feel a little called out because the neighbors to the left of me and to the right of me they both have way better lawns and they have way better like landscaping on the front of their house. Um, you know, where they got like that three feet of like mulch and like blocks and planters that look all nice. And mine is just it, turn yours into a moat, like make just <laughs> really go at it. Well, when it when it rains, it kind of does turn into a moat. <laughs> but like I don't put any of the chemicals on my lawn because I I don't know. I, I don't wanna I don't want to put any can like cancerous chemicals on my lawn that like if my cats go outside and they eat the grass, which they always do, I don't want them to, you know, hurt their kidneys from it or whatever. Are you not feeding um, your cats? <laughs> I, I feed them plenty of food, but they, you know, if you have cats, they like, like to go and gnaw on grass outside. So I'm afraid to like spray stuff, but I have a bunch of dandelions in the front yard. So like I'll mow the yard and it'll look great. And then, like, it just takes three days later, and the dandelions are, like, six inches tall. So then I either got to mow it again, or I can just get the weed whacker and walk the entire front yard trying to get rid of the dandelions to get them at the same level as the grass. It's a pain in the ass. 
I hate it. So I've actually spent the time with like a tool for like digging dandelions out of the ground. And pulling I've them considered all out. those. And it it works if you keep up on it. But again, I barely have any yard. If I if my yard was any bigger, I'd be like, no way. I was I, looking at one at Lowe's last weekend and I'm like mulling. I'm like, do I spend $30 on this weird metal tool? <laughs> yeah, it, I've I've tried the tool and it kind of works to an extent like the the uh soil has to be somewhat moist um in order to get the root out but it's it's kind of just a pain in the ass it's it's just easier to to spray cancerous chemicals onto the lawn <laughs> <laughs> let your boys run around out there oh yeah like <laughs> literally minutes later <laughs> <laughs> no but i mean that's uh, just a gigantic waste of water this is too like 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 I know there are people in Arizona and Southern California and stuff that that maintain lawns and just just if it feels like 100 years from now people having lawns is going to is going to look like I don't know people smoking or something like we consider you know people smoking like why would you do that that seems ridiculous you're but it kind of yeah, feels like lawns the same thing James you, <laughs> James is a smoker no James <laughs> Piss at him. I smoke. I smoke like one cigarette a day. It's like I am not dedicated. <laughs> uh, James, uh, now tis the season to uh, cook out and whatnot. Uh, let's talk about your topic. Well, yeah, my topic is uh, brat stands, and uh, they're amazing for many reasons. Um, first of all, brats. <laughs> so, so would delicious. you say this is a love? But also. <laughs> It might be, a, yeah, it's a lot of infatuation. I wouldn't go that far. But this is a love of brat stands. Um, but another big thing is it's also just the changing of the seasons. Once you start seeing the brat stands out, it's finally summer. Winter in Wisconsin is miserable. So brat stands are, it's kind of like seeing the first robin of the year. Like, ooh, is that a brat stand? <laughs> so do they still put up a brat stand in front of, uh, was it Festival Foods? Yeah, yeah. It's like when you see a exactly. robin pulling a brat yep. out of the ground. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes. Those are raw, of course. You he, do want to the brat. <laughs> <laughs> the late bird gets the cooked brat. <laughs> uh, go on, though, with relish, James. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Yeah, peel back the layers of this onion. Well, I was curious, Dave, do they have like food stands in front of stores like in, in Oklahoma? Is this just a Wisconsin thing? They just don't we have, want brats. They definitely do not have brat stands. Uh, down in Oklahoma, you can generally get like a taco truck with Mexican food, or mainly the big one you'll see is the barbecue truck. So it's everywhere has a barbecue truck with, you know, pulled pork and brisket. And then usually like mashed potato and mac and cheese. And then you can get like the brisket on top of a potato. Stuff like that. Coleslaw? But just a good old fashioned. Mm, yeah, you can get a coleslaw. The, the thing is, as I always thought with barbecue, I always thought it came with cornbread. But some places don't have cornbread and I, I just don't understand it. How can you not serve cornbread with your barbecue? Cornbread sucks. That's Whoa. why. Whoa. Oh, hey, hey, hey. Fair, Shots this, fired. This guy's an Illinois. Um, what is I it was going to say, yeah. listen, I, I didn't even know what a brat stand was. I was like, brat stand? Let me, like, this isn't real. And then it <laughs> was. Uh, I do love brats, spicy brats in particular. But uh, yeah, I'd never heard of a brat stand. You, you, you never experienced a brat stand? Never once. Never once, James. And you, now, you haven't lived. Now I hear this. They're, they're so See, good. I, I agree with Scott. See, I'm I'm not a huge brat fan. I mean, brats are good, but I'll go for an Italian sausage, a chorizo before I'll go oh, for Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> go, on, go on. That's blasphemy. <laughs> what are you talking about? Oh, God. Okay. So, James, you've been to uh, Rockfest. They have, in the yeah. VIP area, they have, like, their own little brat stand where you can get brats and fries. And if you're VIP tickets holders, you get a brat for free or however many you can eat. So every year they have it, 
And every day, three days in a row, I went to the brat stand and they were out every single day. They're like, sorry, we're out of brats, but we do have Italian sausage. <laughs> They're so and much like, more flavorful. Come on. I'm like, oh, okay, I'll give it a try. No, it was terrible. It also, was maybe they terrible. should stop that stupid fucking deal if they're running out of brats all the time. I know. It's bullshit. It's, I think it's the worst brat stand there is is the one at Rockfest. Because it's successful in selling its brats? <laughs> <laughs> well, no, because they probably only have like a hundred of them or something, you know? They need to pump up those numbers. This is a neat, if you're going to have a brat scene, you got to have enough quantity. All right, here's a controversial question. Do you fill brats. the brats and then put them in the beer? Or do you uh, like par cook them in the beer and then finish them on the grill? Oh, okay. So my wife, my wife, she, uh, <laughs> she boils brats. She she always insists on this. I think that's what her mother did. And um, she doesn't even boil them in beer. Like, uh, it's just water. Okay. That, We've never that's... had beer boiled brats. Okay. Well, but oh, then, no. but then, that doesn't but even then, enter the conversation. Like, but okay. then I put it onto the grill afterwards. See, my thing is just take it raw. I don't even boil it. Just throw it right onto the grill. Just get the grill flavor, you know, going through the whole brat. Right. Yeah. I mean, the whole point of what I said is getting the beer flavor into it, not the act of boiling it. <laughs> what I'm saying is my wife is wrong. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what about you other aficionados of brats? Is there beer there's involved? No wrong, there's no wrong way to do it. Like You can boil it in yeah. water. You can boil it in beer if you want, but I found out that it's better to just chug a beer rather than waste a beer <laughs> and pour it in water. I agree. So, yeah. Just slam a beer. I was going to say, I'm usually or, drinking or you beer can, with it. I yeah. have a shelf. I have a shelf in my cupboard that is filled with beer that has been left at my house by other people. You know, just random skanky beers that I'll never drink, and that is my brat beer. <laughs> so, wh oh, which wow. way do you do it? What's that? Which way do you do it? Do you you, oh, you, you the <laughs> beer first and then finish them on the grill, or the other correct, way around? Correct. Correct. Yep. No, two cans of beer, cut up an onion, boil them up, and then you throw them on the grill. Two cans of beer. Wow. Is it always two cans? Well, you got like a 12-pack of brats. One, one can is not even to cover them. You got to cover the brats to boil them. Ah, okay. So, James, what are you putting on your brat? You got the onions, you said. Yeah, brown mustard, spicy mustard. No, you only, the, the onions, are just, onions are just for the boiling, and then you throw onions out because they're disgusting. Ah, so I love this guy. So, no. Oh my god! <laughs> I don't think we've talked about onions on this podcast. So the <laughs> just did grilled onions <laughs> and meat are amazing. I will have grilled onions with literally any kind of meat. I guess no one else shares that. No, I, I love onions. I, <laughs> okay. I think you like grilled onions for burgers, raw onions for brats. Fucking gross. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> I uh I'm okay with like I I used to hate them, but I cannot do raw onions at all. No thanks. If they're cooked into something, I'm fine with it. Not even in like a Subway sandwich or something like that? Like a sub? No! I just said! <laughs> <laughs> I'm the same way. I have to have grilled onions. Raw onions, no thanks. I don't want to. I like, I'll eat it, but I don't like it. I don't like any part of it. Unless it's cooked. That that chunky onion, like you, you, you bite in and you get that big chunky onion with that big onion burst of flavor. It's fucking gross. I hate it. I was with you until you said the word gross. <laughs> <laughs> so 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 John, this whole brat and, and barbecue discussion, this must have your mouth watering, eh? Oh yeah. Sweet. You know, I'm just picturing everything with, you know, tofu and uh <laughs> <laughs> I was I was almost gonna say coleslaw, kind of the only thing John can eat, but no, you can't eat coleslaw either. Sorry. That depends on if what kind of mayo they use, but uh, I would I would bet a brat stand. Oh yeah, I, I, wouldn't, that you I wouldn't trust it. 
You know, I, I I like a good brat, but just that one brat, and I'm kind of done. Uh, I think I've mentioned this before, how I get fuller quicker. Um, so that's weird because back when I was fucking skinny, I could just mow them down. Now that I'm fat as fuck, it's only like maybe one brat, maybe a half of a of a next brat. So the whole brat stand thing. Yeah, it's kind of fun, I guess. You could say, like, oh, uh, Redbox is fun because you get a DVD out of it, but it's just, like, one brat. <laughs> <laughs> I like that comparison. <laughs> um, yeah, there uh, – so you – you somebody mentioned festival. So, yeah, I, we have a brat stand outside a festival pretty much every day. And I, get, I guess I got to say I've never stopped at a brat stand before, although I enjoy the smell, but I, I do oh, enjoy got, brats. Do you, you just lurk around cars. just – yeah, Did I'll hang out there like all the time. <laughs> uh, like at festival, what I've done when I lived in Eau Claire is I've done my grocery shopping, bought, you know, $120 worth of groceries, put it all in my truck, and then I just walk up to the brat stand and I'm like, well, why would I go home and cook this food if they're just cooking food right here? Yeah. And then, you know, I get two brats and a can of Coke. Perfect Saturday, and like that's that's the thing about something like festival or any pretty uh, pretty much any grocery store these days, bigger ones, is that you. I mean, they've got like delis, full service delis, and they've got all these all these various things you can just get ready made and ready to go. So why the hell would I need to cook? I'll go to the grocery store and get ready made stuff. And why go home to your wife? I mean, she's just gonna <laughs> fuck up. <with> that. <laughs> she fucks up a lot of stuff. <laughs> <laughs> oh man um so are we Last ready to use my life for example <laughs> she, she, she she's never she's never heard this podcast we're okay <laughs> what do you do tuesday nights tell me <laughs> uh, uh, let, let's uh move on to my topic shall we um yeah i, yeah, I want to yeah. discuss a hate um and that's fucking mummies getting dug up and put on display um it's weird because it brings me to my love that i want to talk about i love it <laughs> i love this you must be the british empire or something <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's just i don't know it's like you know the the way i heard of mummies first was through the movies you know the fucking the uh staggering mummy Pretty much before zombies ever existed, we had the mummies. And I'm sure I dressed up as a mummy as a kid, you know. Um, but it's just so fucked up that, you know, the British Empire was like, oh, this is strange. They they wrap their dead. We got to show people and stuff like that. Um, so it just seems very disrespectful. <laughs> is, that, is that where all this stuff started was the British Empire? I'm just going to go with that. They're an easy mm -hmm. target for me. <laughs> Uh, so no, you did I, no, you did no, no research at all on this. Not a lot, not a lot. I, I just, so just remember the general idea, the general idea of like showcasing someone's dead body. Right. Not a fan. Is that is that what well, we're and at? just stealing shit from other countries and being like, we're going to show this in our museums. Yes. Yeah, it's uh, big enough. It's, it's so it's so bizarre, especially just the fact that there's these. You know these corpses and um i'm not i think i'm not very uh superstitious but i was brought up very superstitious especially being native american there's so much spirits and you know so shit like that yeah somewhat, so uh you're somewhat stitious <laughs> yes <laughs> 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 <Just a little. laughs> right so, <laughs> would it bother you personally like if you learned that, um, you know, someday your body's going to be dug up and shown in a museum. For sure, yeah. Um, I I don't know. It's the other thing is I don't want to see it. You know, like I was kind of creeped out when I saw one. You know, I'm like, it's a dead corpse. Like we don't display uh, dead presidents. You dig them up and you know, show them off and stuff. Well, maybe. Our ancestors, or no, our descendants will. Um, I was, see, I was like thinking the, of it from... Sorry, go ahead. I was going to say, like, the Catholic Church and stuff have has, like, remains of saints and stuff on display. 
but at least it's, you know, their own people, I guess. <laughs> it's not like, you know, the some other religion came around and be like, oh, these are the saints of our enemies or our, you know. I only saw it from the perspective of our future, like if like people in the future were trying to learn about us now and in a way to do that, they would dig up our bodies and kind of, I don't know, showcase like, like someone, you know, frozen in ice or something, but in that point, I thought you made a good point about how they're taking it from other countries though, and bringing it over. I, I, I guess I kind of agree with that, but in my mind, I don't give a fuck what happens to my body after I'm dead. Like, do whatever you want if you want to dig me up and necrophilia. <laughs> yeah, who cares? Fuck, and fuck my eyes. He sense sockets. to everything. <laughs> <laughs> Let the people know. I mean, I've already arranged for my body to be donated to science when I'm dead. So who knows what they're going to do with that? I mean, put a you... skeleton in a classroom or something. How do you arrange something like that? Uh, I just went through the. U of M here. I just imagine you like calling random schools. Hey, you guys want <laughs> my dead body out of here? No, they have a whole uh, anatomy bequest form. Yeah, I know one of my grandpas did that with like the University of Chicago. He just, you know, donated it to the medical school. And then they basically just use you as a cadaver and practice surgery or whatever, you know, the doctors do on the dead body. Would yeah. you do that, Dave? Um, I mean, I sure. Like, I really don't care. Like, to me, if it was up to me, I would like to be fed to either sharks or tigers. <laughs> How about a tiger shark? That would be cool. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that'd be cool. I don't know. Just being put like in a box in the ground is so boring. Like, yawn. You know, it's something cooler than that. <laughs> Okay, I just well, love the idea of your wife trying to go through with your wishes afterwards. Like, no, he wanted this. He wanted me yeah. to throw his body in with the sharks. <laughs> Lady, you can't do that here. Zoo. <laughs> Come on, move me into the zoo. Widow, zoo. <laughs> I'm a grieving widow. Respect my wishes. <laughs> Actually, um, <clears throat> the whole, you know, mummy thing where, you know, the British Empire, I'll, I'll just go with them again. They're like, oh my God, like they, they wrapped their, their dead and they put them in these, um, uh, sarcophagus says and uh <clears throat> yeah Sorry, but like go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> but like in my culture uh we don't go in coffins or we didn't you know we were just kind of like maybe wrapped up in a blanket not wrapped up individually like mummies and then placed in the ground um and actually my stepdad before he passed he wanted to be buried in the traditional way but we're not allowed to anymore so it's just it's and we kind of experienced that as well like uh fucking companies will bulldoze effigy mounds and shit where we have all, a lot of people buried under these uh mounds and they're like well sorry we bought the we bought the land and we need an oil thing going through here and shit like that so this it's is just the premise of poltergeist right yeah i just gonna say that <laughs> yes yeah so uh it's just i'm mad about that so i just feel i feel for the mummies but the mummies don't feel for anything <laughs> <laughs> so okay so that's uh, so matt how would you would you be okay being displayed in a museum I guess I wouldn't care. I mean, is there money in it? No. <laughs> right here, right now? No. Like, ultimately, Give me 20 I, bucks, I I'll just display me. Yeah, I mean, I'll sign whatever you need me to sign. Remember that, like, traveling, like, bodies exhibit? Mm -mm. I've seen body exhibits before, yeah. Um, I never went to one, but I remember learning that, like, all the bodies on display were, like, prisoners and stuff who just you know like um didn't was it was it um like people from china or something i don't remember exactly but like it was like these were not people who wanted to do this it was just oh we have these bodies do you want to have like a museum display basically Good. uh james uh, do you give a damn what happens to your body afterwards uh I don't really care, but uh, Eric's going to give me a Viking funeral, so we're going to do <laughs> nice. that. That's a good one. 
Right. Next question. Do you? <laughs> next question. Uh, do you care what's happening to your body now? <laughs> <laughs> this temple? Yeah. Uh, yeah. One, one cigarette a day, Vince. One cigarette a day. <laughs> <laughs> Another nail in the coffin. <laughs> <laughs> All in moderation. You're doing okay, James. Uh, should we? Uh, should we go on? to the last all right i think that's me um i love the short film world of tomorrow and um hopefully everyone on this call has or on this pod has watched it um for any listeners out there it's basically the story there's this little girl um and her she gets like a weird video call from someone in the future and it's like a third generation clone of herself and she kind of just talks about what her life is like in the future what the future is like um explains that the the world is about to end basically and how different people of different classes are reacting to that and um yeah it's basically just like the conversation between them and um emily the third getting a memory from emily prime was the whole reason she did this um but yeah i just thought it was like kind of sad really um absurd and surreal a lot of humor to it a lot of like philosophy to it um, some pretty great quotes in it, um, which we can go into, but, um, yeah. What did you all think of it? Did, uh, I, I did not know it? what to, I did. I, I did not know what to expect and I started watching it and it's this crude animation that I, I was last thing I expected, but then it just was such a beautiful short. And there, like you said, there's so many great quotes and it made me just one of my, one of the interesting parts that i thought was super cool was how some people weren't having enough money like the lower classes were tr like testing out this time travel that wasn't was unstable and so they would time travel into like outer space and then they would just die because it didn't work or they would time travel two hundred thousand years in the past and then be unable to live in this that area and just die and it was just like oh my god so haunting did it did anyone else watch it because i could talk about other things as well <laughs> yeah. I... that, that, like that little part specifically um it reminded me of willy wonka and the chocolate factory where they, they try to put them into the television and they get like shrunk <laughs> down but then they can't get him back he's just stuck in the television and then Willy Wonka's, you know, like, oh, we haven't worked out all the kinks yet. Sorry. <laughs> but, uh, I saw it. I, I thought it was incredibly sad and depressing. Um, like, just, like, the thought of, like, never dying, but just, like, your body just being cloned and then your consciousness moving on to this next body that will just survive forever and then until they come out with a new version and then your just consciousness keeps moving to the next form, but you never die. It, it's like in, incredibly depressing because it's like, I would imagine suicide rates would be super high. Cause like some people would just be like, all right, I want over. I'm done. Like, or even worse, her grandpa in the, Oh box. my God. The sad, <laughs> the saddest part of the whole. He wrote us a letter. Oh, Oh God. Oh God. Oh God. Oh my God. Holy mother of God. Oh, 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 oh God. How about the piece of robot uh, poetry? That was good too. <laughs> yeah, I, uh, I felt all kinds of feelings about this one. Uh, I, I had seen it once before years ago, whenever it came out and this, I saw it a second and third time. I, I kind of strange. I, I, uh, I, I had it on in the shower I know most of you guys put other things on in the shower, but I was taking a shower and I put it on <laughs> and, um, and I kind of, I kind of got a sense of what it was about, but then at the same time, my mind was, was trailing about, uh, work and shower, shower stuff. 
shower <laughs> stuff. No, like it, it just kind of made me, you know, it's kind of one of those things that kind of makes you want to live in the present as opposed to looking towards the future. And uh, yeah, I, you know, it, it, it's, it's something that came to me while I was taking a shower and watching this. And then I decided I needed to watch it again and I did watch it again and I enjoyed it again. Um, I don't know that I love it, but it does make me feel lots of feelings and, uh, and there's a certain existential crisis about it all. And um, it kind of, it's kind of life affirming and it uh, kind of makes me feel better about death in a strange way. Like, like humans centuries from now are just, you know, they're still humans and they still have all their doubts and their loneliness and all this sort of stuff. So, um, yeah, it's, it's comforting in a strange way. Well, it's kind yeah, of like, I agree. It's kind of like the being displayed. Would you guys, you know, it sounds like Dave is like, no, I want to end it. You know, like, I don't want to go on and transport my mind and shit like that. I mean, would uh, you guys do this? James? Yeah. Oh, I, I absolutely would not. I mean, for me, it's it's kind of like with the other conversation that you guys have been talking about with the free will, that one. Um, it's like, I don't want to know what's going to happen in the future. Like that, enjoy like what, what you're doing right now. Live in the present. You already know that what's going to happen. Just what what's the point then? I would um, one. I would one hundred percent do this and put my consciousness into anything and everything and continue <laughs> along the charade of whatever for as long as I could. Uh, death terrifies me. I hate it. I think about it way too often, and it's something like I guess I'm a person who enjoys having a little bit more control of my life. Uh, so knowing that I can't control that aspect of it, it's just very scary. And what, what are you talking about specifically? Death. You're talking about yeah death like okay. so in, instead of death i would choose to like take my consciousness and be able to okay. continue on into some other if it would be at a clone of myself or whatever i personally though i don't believe that if you could transfer your consciousness to something i don't think it would really be you continuing that's i think that's it would fair. be like a new entity arising who can just remember what you remember yeah but is there any difference really to your family and your loved ones and people who know you, no difference. To you, I think you just end. Right, you still end, and then there's just something else out there living as you. And wasn't that like a thing on Star Trek where like some of the people wouldn't teleport because they believed you just end, and then like a copy of you <laughs> is created on the other side? Holy shit, that's awesome. Never heard of that one. <laughs> Oh yeah, that's kind of like uh, what's that it's movie? Like the the Prestige. Prestige. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah, what what kind of scares me about the uh, like taking your consciousness and downloading into something is just like this weird world that we live in, where like all these big corporations run everything. So it's like I'm not just like putting my consciousness into a clone of myself i'm putting my consciousness into a google chrome clone that is owned by mark zuckerberg and meta and like everything is going to run through their uh you know their system and their operating system and I don't know, that's you're going to be like that's selling actually a great yourself point. to the I think company. he just convinced me to go against it. Yeah, I think. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I don't like it all. reminds me of like Terminator <laughs> in Skynet, and it's just well, like, have you guys, I don't know. Have you guys, has anyone seen Altered Carbon, the show? No. no. I'm, I'm aware of it, but no, I never saw it. It's it's pretty much that exact same thing, where the, the rich people, they, they live forever because they just continuously put themselves into new bodies that, you know, were poor people and they just couldn't afford to live basically. So, and then they'd have like backup files of themselves. So even if like somehow they got killed or deleted, they could go and basically reboot up a backup file, but it's, it's, yeah, it's interesting. And I just like, I don't understand how it would still like how a consciousness could be, convert to a machine and still be the same person because like you know like i'm someone who gets crabby when i'm hungry 
Like what's the <laughs> machine equivalent of that? You know what I mean? Like that's part of my personality, right? <laughs> so, well, so you're a hangry person is what you're saying? <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Are you hangry right now? No, I had a I had a snack before the pod. Smart. <laughs> so well, that's Go ahead. That's the that's the sci-fi aspect of it, right? Like how how would you how would you create a generic brain? Like so 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 there's going to be like a basic brain that you're going to implant into somebody else or you know, you're going to implant things into their brain or whatever, but then how do you extrapolate out and get all these various details of your personality? I mean, that's that's the incredible ridiculous sci-fi of it all. And I would I think that's a crazy cool idea. But I, I, um, I don't know. It's a sexy idea too. I, I've, I've, it, it would be cool to live on forever. But uh, I don't. Yeah, I don't. I don't think I would. I think, <clears throat> I think it would depend. Okay, if it could work, if like somehow, yeah, that is you in this next body or whatever. I, but I think also it, it would depend if anyone else is doing it. Like, say, if my s- siblings. My mom, if they're like, hey, we're going to continue on, you know, uh, and then it's like, I don't really make a lot of friends, not like, you know, uh, just in general, like the older I get, I'm like, I have no interest in new people, you know, I think Scott is the newest friend I've ever had. (laughs) Uh, (laughs) (laughs) And so, and so it's like, well, and then what do you do is are we am i living on so i could still write so i can still podcast are there is there a band that that just broke out the spot and i'm about to die i'm like no bring me back so i can check out this band they're gonna be awesome you know Uh, what am i missing um yeah it all that would really depend if that technology worked i i'd like what uh matt was saying earlier though about like appreciate it because i wrote down a quote from it's like you are alive and living now now is the envy of all the dead and i think that the short helped remind me that i am alive and i should appreciate every little moment be it bad or good and sometimes i dwell in regret and just start hating life and and it's it kind of just helped me kind of maybe start thinking about that a little differently when i start to get into a mode like that to a mood like that to try to maybe pull myself out of it a little easier because I am alive. Yeah. See, that's the thing about the present, Emily Prime. You only appreciate it when it is the past. Yes. That was my favorite quote of the whole thing. Um, Yeah. See, like it it, kind of changes your worldview in that moment. But then I I always get stuck in that, in that thinking about the future or thinking about the past. Like it's, it's, it's fine to be present in that moment. Like, holy crap. I need to be present right now, but then your brain wanders. Like I, yeah. my my brain wanders. Um. Well, <laughs> I also uh, loved in the the short the uh, just the dialogue of Emily Prime, like so just she's so adorable. Wild, like yeah, <laughs> and like some of the interchanges where it's like, what's this up in the sky? <sighs> Dead bodies. They're okay. No, they're all dead. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, apparently that's his niece, the guy who made all this. He he was just, she was just on the floor, like, coloring. And he's like, hey, say this. Or he just somehow got this dialogue from her. And yes, I, you could just hear the the wonderment that just, uh, how young she is with this robotic third generation version of herself. You know, it's so bizarre. I, I really really like this and yeah i was put in a weird headspace afterwards so the, thanks the John. fake out the fake out ending oh my god oh yeah, yeah. Like, <laughs> i'm just like rationalizing it to myself like well you know like this they wouldn't have had this conversation if she never grew up to have her first clone so you know <laughs> yeah i was like it's a time travel paradox <laughs> <laughs> i also just love the um how she sums up the thing where she's like, you will feel a deep longing for something you cannot quite remember. It will be a beautiful visit. And then we will shall share the same fate as the rest of the human race dying horribly. Yeah. <laughs> and I mean, I thought that applies like not even 
with the media strike or whatever. That's just how it is for all of us. We all just die horribly in the end. That's strangely the the comforting, life affirming thing for me. <laughs> to be honest with you, You're like well, I can't wait for this to be over. <laughs> so you guys, damn lawn, be over. It's just <laughs> it, it puts things in perspective. Yeah. So you guys don't believe in when they're like, oh, she went uh, peaceably in her bed, you know, in the night. You know, yeah, you guys don't believe that. They're like, fucking, I'm sure it hurt as like hell. Well, I think it's more the pain along the way, right? Yeah. Uh, I don't, yeah, I mean, people can die peacefully in their sleep, but. I mean, usually the death is the peaceful part because you're in so much pain that you want to be dead and that's like a release from the pain because it's finally over and you get to rest in peace what a dark ending for this fun podcast <laughs> uh, i was having such a fun time and now i'm just sad you know sometimes <laughs> i sit in a chair late at night and quietly <laughs> feel very bad oh my gosh <laughs> that line that line i wanted to write it and put it on the wall or something like that it was uh, it struck me like oh those were be like amazing lyrics or something like that but but uh, then there's there's something continuing on from that about that makes her feel good because she can feel those feelings or something right yeah, yeah i am very proud of my sadness because it means i am more alive yes i wrote that down as well um but in the meantime uh let's continue living but we have to stop podcasting soon so <laughs> like subscribe Bye. comment this was a few goldie lock bears with a bits of cloud John, John, and it's matt damon <laughs> <laughs> james clark <laughs>